100 years ago in 1916, at about the same time that this video footage was taken of the construction of the Brynathen Cathedral, the town of Brynathen became recognized by the state of Pennsylvania as an official town. But our little community had received its name, Brynathen, about 20 years before this film was taken and before Brynathen was officially recognized as a town. Brynathen was recognized as an official town in the year 1916. In the year 2016, we celebrate the centennial of Brynathen, or the 100th anniversary of when it was recognized officially as a town in the county of Montgomery in the state of Pennsylvania. About 125 years ago, in the late 1800s, before there was a town called Brynathen, new church people lived in the city of Philadelphia and worshipped together at a new church building on Cherry Street. The early academy of the new church was also located there in part of this building. But in the 1880s, cities could be pretty crowded and noisy and dirty, and some thought that cities were unhealthy. Many of these new church men and women living in Philadelphia dreamed of moving out to the countryside where it would be healthier and cleaner and quieter and less crowded. There they could start a new church community and live together and worship together and send their children to a new church school. Sometimes the new church people from the Cherry Street Church in Philadelphia traveled to the area now known as Brynathen from Philadelphia by train and had church services and picnics in an area that was known as Ulnwick Grove beside the Pennypack Creek. Here is a very old map showing Ulnwick Grove between the railroad tracks and the Pennypack Creek just south of Fetters Mill Road. There was also a dance pavilion at Ulnwick Grove. It was at the bottom of a big hill. You might know that hill. Lots of kids sled there today. The hill used to belong to Lester and Grace Osplund, but now it's owned by Joy and Phil Farrar. If you look carefully at the bottom of the hill, you can see the train tracks and the Pennypack Creek beyond. The area between the creek and the tracks used to be known as Ulnwick Grove, and it went from there all the way up to where the Brynathen Post Office is today. This is what an old steam locomotive train might have looked like, chugging its way past that sledding hill and up through the area that was then known as Ulnwick Grove. Sometimes local farmers provided a place for Philadelphia New Churchmen to stay for the summer. Sometimes the new church visitors from Cherry Street in Philadelphia would hold worship services and picnics on Knights Hill. Knights Hill is where Cairnwood stands today, but it had not yet been built. Mr. John Pitcairn began to buy up land in what was then called Moreland Township, but what is now known as Brynathen today. This part of Moreland Township was known to some as Ulnwick Grove, you might recognize Fetters Mill on the Pennypack Creek, right at the northern end of Alnwick Grove. Here is another old map right between the railroad tracks and the Pennypack Creek. In 1893, the Philadelphia New Church decided to move out to the countryside and start a new community. In 1895, Mr. John Pitcairn's home, called Cairnwood, was completed. Many other new church people built houses here as well, or else purchased houses that had already been built. They were creating a new village. Most of these houses were on South Avenue and Central Avenue. We know Central Avenue as Ulwick Road today. So that is the story of how our little community was begun.
Some of the men from the village formed a local government called the Village Association. The Village Association was in charge of the waterworks. The waterworks consisted of a water tower with a windmill on top. The windmill pumped water from a spring house nearby to provide water for the community. Here is the spring house standing next to an old sycamore tree. And here is a photograph of some people of that era standing beside that same spring house and sycamore tree. Here is a modern day aerial photograph of the same spring house and the same sycamore tree. You can still see them today. Here is a very old photograph of some local children playing underneath the windmill. The windmill does not still stand today. However, on the same property, you can see the stones upon which the legs of the windmill stood. Those stones are out beside Ulnwick Road. Besides caring for the waterworks, the village association also controlled the burial ground that had been laid out for the benefit of this village. Many of you probably know where that same cemetery is today. The people of Brynethan thought it was very important for us to have a railroad station and a post office for our little town of Brynethan. Our first post office was in this house, which still stands today right across the tracks, or what used to be the tracks from our current post office. Well, that is how Brynethan began as a community, as a village. But let's go back to 1916. And let's celebrate the centennial of Brynathen. Here is some old video footage from just about a hundred years ago. Here is some video footage of what the Academy of the New Church looked like nearly 100 years ago. It looks different today, but I think you will recognize this building. This is what a Charter Day procession would have looked like in 1916. This video was taken just a couple of years after 1916. Look at how very different the people look. How different do their clothes look? And here are some World War I soldiers from Renathen. Back in those days, people didn't know that it was dangerous to smoke. The man on the left is named Arthur Sinistvet. He sure has a lot of relatives still living in Brynathen. What was life like in 1916? What did they do for fun? Why, they had a tug of war, of course. They showed school spirit on Charter Day back in 1916. And what else did they do for fun back in 1916? Well, they played football games. We still do that today. They also did the high jump. That looks like fun. What else did Brynathen kids do 100 years ago? Well, one thing was they had a Maypole celebration. Sometimes they had a square dance outside at their school. Sometimes they marched in parades. Here is a parade of the Brynathen Church School kids celebrating George Washington's birthday. And here is an Arbor Day celebration with the elementary school planting a tree. Here is another parade on the 4th of July. The kids are coming up Station Hill. And they even had races back then. And they all wore stars and stripes. Or else they would go out and hang out in the woods. 
Kids just played outside much more back then. There was no TV and no video games. Many people in Bernathan 100 years ago still traveled by horse or horse and cart, although there was such a thing as an invention of an automobile. There was no skating rink 100 years ago, so the kids skated on the pond up near the Hoffman's house, or else they skated on the Pennypack Creek. They also went swimming in that same pond. Come on in, the water's fine. A motion picture camera was a relatively new invention back then. Here is some actual footage of what some little Bryn Athen kids might have looked like back then. The tiny kid is Leon Rhodes, and the older girl is Marjorie Rose Grubb. And here are the children playing with their mother, Marjorie Wells Rose. We have talked about how Bernathan came into being, and we've also talked about what life was like back in 1916 when Bernathan became an official town. So now let's talk about some of the buildings that still stand in Bernathan today that were standing 100 years ago in 1916. I think you recognize the barn. That was here in 1916. And so was the Orchard Artworks house right beside the barn. Here is the Genslinger's house on Waverly Lane. It was an old farmhouse that stood long before 1916. And here is the Academy of the New Church. Of course, Benade Hall stood, as did De Charms Hall in 1916. Here's Cairnwood, which was standing in 1916. That's been here since 1895. Kids still play on the lawn today. Now, Bishop Klein's house at Olnwick Road and South Avenue was not there in 1916, but it certainly is an important site because it is the location of this inn that stood in Bernathan. Many people lived there. And as you already know, the Bernathan Cathedral stood, or mostly stood, in 1916. And here is the spring house with the giant sycamore tree that you have already seen and heard about a couple of times in this video. Remember this picture of the kids hanging out underneath the old water tower? Here are those square stones along Olnwick Road the ones that supported the legs of the windmill and the water tower. Of course, those stones used to be arranged in a square. Now, just beyond those stones and over toward the Cooper's house stood our first church. It was called the Clubhouse, and it sat right on Olnwick Road. It was very small. It was only 30 feet by 30 feet. You can see the windmill and the water tower right beyond the clubhouse or our church building. Here is the Sinisvet House. It used to be called the Brown Study. It is the home of the Navarro kids' grandpa. I have heard it rumored that this very old Brynathan Elementary School photo was taken outside of the Brown study. This is the Odiner's house. It's called Pendle House because the Pendletons used to live there way, way back when. Here is a very early New Church Assembly group photo taken at Pendle House. This house belonged to the McQueens for a very long time, but now it belongs to Mrs. Good. 
Here is a very old picture of two houses that still stand today. The first of those two very old houses is this one on South Avenue. It belongs to the Washniks. And this was called the Price House. Let's pass the Bostock's house as we drive down South Avenue. In 1916, there was a different house where the Roscoe's house is now. That house was there. And so was this house. This house was too. And so was that one. And that one. And the Coy's house. And that house too. And even that one. Here is where the railroad tracks used to be. Now it's being made into a trail. That is the story of the beginnings of our little town of Bryn Athen, and how Bryn Athen was finally recognized in 1916, 100 years ago, as a borough in the county of Montgomery in the state of Pennsylvania.